Welcome to the NBA Coast to Coast Podcast, brought to you by thelines.com. Coming to you from the West Coast, Josh Lander, joined by Nate Weitzer. He's on the East Coast. We've got play up props here for you on a Wednesday in the middle of the week, where we're about to get on a midweek heater, as Nate texted me earlier. We went two and two in the play up props, uh, really two and three. We, Nate had a, a nice uh, Garland hit on the assist, but uh, did not hit the points. I was over two because I played like a bum yesterday, and I'm coming back with a vengeance today. I really like these props. So let's get into it. Do make sure to like and subscribe to that page. We also have best bets up for you today. We're bringing you them each and every weekday this season. Head to thelines.com. Use all the power ranks and everything we're putting up on the site right now and the odds finder tool to make sure you're getting the best odds and juice available to you on all these bets and props this season. Nate, let's go ahead and run right into your first NBA play a prop with a top two NBA player of all time. <laughs> yeah, and he's coming off the worst loss of his career, LeBron James, in terms of margin, coming off like what only the second no zero rebound game of his career. So I'll take the 32 and a half points slash rebounds for Braun here. Uh, it is the front end of a back-to-back, -back, which gives you me some concern. If you want to just get a quick hitter then and not worry about whether he's going to play, if it's going to be a blowout down the stretch, over five and a half points in the first quarter is a nice minus, minus 110. Um, so divvy up the, the units however you want there. But look at what LeBron has done re this season after double-digit losses for, for, you know, 34 and 3 at Miami in a one-point loss. 36 11 and 5 in a win at Phoenix, 35 5 and 9 win at Portland. Um, so I would consider, you know, just kind of getting the well rounded line here, some money line parlays with LeBron to go like 25 5 and 5 or higher. Detroit, I mean, what is it, a 12 game losing streak at this point? It, it's just like they're not doing anything well. They are playing fast. It's surprising that they don't give up a ton of rebounds despite their putrid shooting recently. Uh, but, yeah, their last three at home, 101.4 pace. Uh, and they are a very good offensive rebounding team. So that's what makes me lean more towards the boards. LeBron's got to get down there, keep all those bigs uh, from crashing the glass because, you know, he, he pretty much puts it on himself every time they lose. So that, that You know, we got to be better, I got to be better. And especially when he looks at that zero rebound for himself in the box score. Uh, expect him to to give more effort there on the glass and for the Lakers to be controlling this game more. For what it's worth, last two against Detroit, 34 points per game, also five rebounds, seven assists, and it was a plus 32. So this is not one of those teams that the Lakers tend to slip up against, um, and I don't think in this spot that they're going to, uh, but sandwiched between really tough games, again, at OKC tomorrow. So I think they take care of business early and get a win. I think so too. Um, I mean, I, I do think Detroit's going to be s just clawing and scratching to, to to be able to hang around in this game as best they can. Uh, with that losing streak, playing at home, they get the Lakers on the road. You know, I, I get all of that. I still do think the Lakers pull it out, as we talked about with our, our money line parlay bet with the Magic. Who also, we're going to spank the Wizards. The the LeBron bet for the first quarter, I really really like. I, I haven't really uh, dove into his first quarter number specifically whether or not he tries to defer or not but I, if they if, if our game theory of he's coming out on a tear is anything to to believe in it's got to start in the first quarter as well and, and set the tone so um and like we said we were a little bit worried of anything about the blow up factor which means the first quarter bet probably is just a solid so uh my first pick here i'm going with zion points and assists against this philly team who is weakest against the power forward position so over 28 and a half for mr williamson He's gone over this number in his last five against some, actually some similar teams, at least Denver, sack twice, the Clippers, and then Utah. So the uh, 28 and a half, uh, and a, the 28 and a half percent usage rate, easy for me to say, that he's had over that time, I still think is going to continue. If CJ McCollum is back for his first game, I can't imagine that he's out there for much more than like 25 minutes, to be honest. Uh, there was a collapsed lung situation for him. And he was really not ever really going to make it last game, even though he was listed as doubtful, which I suppose gave him a small chance. So without him, we're talking about 14 uh, or more potential assists a game for Zion in, in, the, in those games without CJ. He's point Zion. He's gotten at least five assists, especially, which is you know where his, his assist prop specifically is at for this game. Gone over that in those last five uh, and six of his last eight without CJ. So he definitely plays a lot more with the ball in his hand um, and, and, you know, around the same spots for sure. But he's starting from the perimeter at times as well, which allows him to to kind of dish once he gets in the lane 
and two to three people have to collapse on him because of how good he is. As soon as he gets in the air, you're done. So you really need guys on him with his feet still on the ground, which forces him to pass more. But I still think he's good for the points because of, of the matchup that he'll have with a Tobias Harris or whomever at this point that they're really going to try to put on him, which not much of a stopper for a guy like Zion. So um, he's in, in uh, 7 of 10 also, I should say, without Jose Alvarado in there, another good stat who is not likely to play again tonight either. Like I said, Philly most vulnerable versus power forwards. They allowed uh, the th- uh, fourth most points per game to power forwards. They uh, are giving up a good amount of points in the paint, which, I mean, you, you you are surprised to hear sometimes, but Joe Val definitely is capable of pulling Joel from the, the paint and bringing him out to the three-point line. Certainly not capable of stopping him, as you mentioned in best bets, why we like an over in this game. But I do also think there's going to be points coming from the Pelly side, and a big reason will be Zion. Uh, you mentioned it in best bets as well. 33 points per game in 31 and a half minutes per game. Also six assists in that amount of time. That's ridiculous per 36 numbers, man. And it's been the same team that he's playing going up against here. No P.J. Tucker, if anything, you feel just as good about. So uh, I'm going to roll with, with Zion to get the 29 points and assists in this one. And what's the points? Just 24 and a half? Or 20? 20, 20, uh, uh, yeah. Yeah, that's right. Both of but yeah. Yeah, 25, 26 points. I, I would just, yeah, yeah. I, I think you can just hit the points as well if you're worried about CJ coming back and them having a, a more reliable playmaker. I, I don't know what his minute situation Fair. will be, like you said, um, as if he comes back. But I think he is targeting tonight as a return. Uh, makes me like the over more in this game. I think we could we could see a nice games uh, game flow situation where both teams are around 120. I mean, that's what they've been lately, two of the most uh, efficient offensive teams in the league, um, especially in this situation where New Orleans at home is far more efficient offensively. Expect Philly to come along, and yeah, they don't have a Zion stopper. Does anybody? Um, there's no good matchup for Zion Williamson. Um, and well, Paolo Bancaro. Okay. Yeah. Paolo Bancaro has a good matchup tonight against <laughs> the Wizards as he comes off his um, Eastern Conference Player of the Week campaign in his last five. 23 and a half points per game on 56% field goal shooting. And I will take him to get 23 again here. His prop is at 22 and a half. I mean, the Wizards are a a terrible defense, as we know. 67 paint points allowed in their last three. They give up 39 points to Brooke Lopez on 14 for 17 field goal shooting. There's zero resistance in the paint. Uh, 124 points per game overall, mostly on field goals. Paolo's not really getting the line that much heat, but he is scoring efficiently from the field. They are giving up the six, second most points and rebounds to small forwards. If you think of Paolo as an interchangeable small slash power forward, uh, if so, he gets to bully what uh, Denny Abdia, Corey Kispert, or Kyle Kuzma if he's at the four. Like there, there's nobody at those two spots that is stopping anyone for Washington. He faced them twice in March last year when we had this kind of iteration of the Wizards and went for 24. 10 and a half and seven assists um, scoring a lot more at home this year, <clears throat> nearly 22 a game versus 17 and a half on the road, 23 plus points and five straight at home. And you've seen the spike without Wendell Carter jr. The, the spacing is much better for him. Uh, Cause you have Goga as a more traditional big, not somebody drifting around the perimeter like Wendell. So his three point shooting has really spiked without Wendell is 48% versus 27%. And he's averaging five more points per game, uh, five and a half, in fact, to 21 and a half. So uh, I'll stay, keep Balo to stay hot in one more time here. Hopefully it's not a total blowout and he gets uh, some points there in the fourth quarter. Right. I, I am going to predict blowout officially. Um, best bets, I, was, I wasn't really waffling. I was just took them in a money line parlay. But I, I do like the magic to just pwn. Can I use that word here? Pwn them in this one because of everything that they do well, which is emblematic of what uh, Paolo does well, plus the power forward situation. If you can't guard tall wings, you're screwed against Orlando. And guess who can't guard tall wings at one of the worst rates? This team right here. I, I was. Uh, we've been targeting power forwards, tall, small forwards, athletic, tall guys that play on the wing against the Wizards like a Jalen Johnson uh, who had eight points in eight minutes before he went out the other night in that Hawks game? Guys like that, and and Paolo is is maybe not as like quite as bouncy as Jalen Johnson, but man, like similar size and and capable, way more capable. Six free throw attempts a game. I expect him to get to the line as well. So all good for Paolo there. Uh, Jordan Poole under final bet under eighteen and a half points. I thought it was seventeen and a half. I ended up finding it at eighteen and a half. That's wonderful. Minus one hundred five for that with a full unit. 
Jordan Poole. He and he and Draymond kind of deserve each other. Let's talk about Orlando's defense, though. They limit shooting guards to the second fewest points per game on the season. Jalen Suggs, man, you've been calling it since like day two of the season. You were like, yo, Jalen Suggs is different with it on defense right now. And that is a huge reason why they're limiting opposing shooting guards to the second fewest. They've got a really tall, athletic, incredibly good defensive shooting guard on their side in Jalen Suggs. Um, giving them the clamps, probably an all-NBA defender this year. A 107 individual defensive rating for Jay Suggs. The overall team's second best defensive rating. Talked about it in the Best Bets video as well. They allow the fifth fewest three-pointer attempts per game. Jordan Poole is going to rely on that, where he's shooting 28%, by the way, on the season from deep. They allow the, the eighth fewest made as well. They, they just don't allow you to shoot the ball, to be honest. Uh, they're, they're winning their games at home by about 11 points because they're also just not allowing you to shoot the ball. They, they're playing slowly, uh, and they're limiting your shots because they're pushing you off the three-point line and then, honestly, getting blocks once you get anywhere inside 10 feet. Um, This under for Jordan Poole has hit in seven of his last 10 games. The three overs were one versus Charlotte and then two versus Milwaukee. We know their struggles on defense, especially around the perimeter, even though they've been improved down low. So I'm going to give them the benefit of the doubt. His 39% field goal uh, shooting on the season, uh, predominantly from the mid-range and the three-point line. And it's just, it's not a place you're going to be able to score on on these uh, magic. You're going to have to get inside. And like I said, once you get inside the, the, the three-point line, and now we're talking about Jordan Poole making decisions, I, I'm talking about turnovers, points off of turnovers, and not a lot of points for Jay Poole. Yeah, this is a <clears throat> Tyus Jones game, I think, for, for Washington. I mean, the way you have to match Orlando's style is take care of the ball, put in put in a tra- more traditional point guard, let him make decisions, not let Jordan Poole be freewheeling the way he was in those high-scoring games with with the Hornets and Bucks, which okay. to me that this, that says so much about the Bucks defense right now that that's the only team Jordan Poole has been able to cook against is like wow, uh, we might want to keep targeting their point guard defense uh, until further notice. I mean, wing defense too. I know, uh, but uh, Tim McMahon on on the uh, Hoop Collective said Malik Beasley is the worst defensive starter in the NBA. And then you got Dame out there. So, I mean, that's that's just an aside here. Yeah, I mean, Orlando's defense is great. And I got to imagine Poole's not scoring as much on the road uh, unless he, like, finds some baddies in the crowd that he really wants to impress. He's just generally not that motivated uh, when he doesn't have the home crowd at his back. Well played, sir. Well played. If you don't know what we're talking about, just Google it. That is all the time we have for you in this one. Looking to uh, get on a heater here. I'm, I'm, I'm really looking for a sweep here from us, dude, on, on these p- player props on Wednesday nights. So check out the best bets as well. Got those up each and every weekday. Like and subscribe. And until we see you next, happy betting. <laughs>